Hi, this is Jeffrey Cohen, Investment Advisor, Principal, and President of U.S. Advanced Computing Infrastructures Incorporated, here to talk to you about the markets. Um, we came up with a new idea today, U.S. equities, calm seas. The forces that are pointing up are equal to the forces that are pointing down. We do not have a lot of movement, and that is very, very positive for stocks. But we're going to talk about what some of those uh, key points are. So, But just the sense of it is, when the market doesn't go up or down, when it kind of goes flat, it again means, you know, if gravity is things like the cost of capital, then euphoria tries to push it up, changes in economic behavior. What pushes it down is the cost to hold investments, the risk of investments. And it's very interesting for us. So... We run algorithmic quantitative analysis on 3,000 or more stocks every night. Now, sometimes we want to run only on larger stocks. Sometimes we want to run on much more liquid stocks. But um, let's see, last, like last night, last night we ran on 3,277 stocks. So we built a matrix and we searched the combinations of 3,277 stocks at exactly the same time. It's insane. It's a lot of search space. And so we're registered in Illinois. I am the investment advisor representative and principal. Charles Schwab is our custodian. So if we invest your money, we do it with Charles Schwab. They hold the money so that you know it's there because today they're holding four trillion dollars of money. And our little bit isn't going to be that much. Let's say we're doing 100 million. Schwab can handle it. That's why I like Schwab. So the Chicago Quantum Net Scores are a proprietary algorithm and platform. And we published articles and we've talked all about it. So if you're interested, give me a call at 312-515-7333. You can get a free consultation, call for an appointment. Or you could just say, you know what, Jeff, I just want to learn more about U.S. stock market analysis, either long or short. You go in, you learn about it, you realize, oh my God, Jeff's going to help me find a needle in a haystack. And then when you get down to the bottom and you're ringing it all up, you add it to the cart, boom, 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 coupon code. I got a 90% off coupon code between now and the end of the year. That's crazy talk. So we're going to talk a little bit about what's happening. Now, we have not updated our website. I'll be honest with you. been super busy. I'm so sorry. Just like way, way busier than I'm used to. And so some of the things that we would talk about before for market information, your top stock market drivers, we're just going to talk a little bit about those. And we're going to use the model, which there's the actual model run. We're just going to talk about it. Stock price volatility is down even more. It's the craziest thing. Now, for all the stocks, it's not down anymore. It was 3.2. Now it's 3.2. Interesting. But for this S&P 500 equity index, it is down. It's 0.14. Or 1.4, and it was 1.5. The trend continues lower. Overall, every stock, it's pretty flat. It hasn't gone lower. And the VIX just recently hit 12 handles, so 12 point something. That's really low. This is very bullish for stocks. It's great, right? Stock price momentum. So you might say, Jeff, what, 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 Qu momentum? What are you, some kind of uh, snake oil salesman? No. If you look at all the market caps of all the stocks, 3,277 of them, and you add them up, it's 51, and I just did this from last night, it's $51.2 trillion. Where are we at? 51.7. So we might have peaked at 51.7 because we're at 51.2. Wow. 
were close to the top. That's a lot of money in the stock market, by the way. Close price, 94% of last year's average. Let's take a look. So um, last day close versus average. So close price. The average is 99. So the average stock has gone up, even though the total market cap has not. So that would say, well, let's check the volume first. Because there's an implication, and I should be writing this stuff down. I need someone here. Get over here so you could write this down for me. Because otherwise, I'm talking, and now i got to write, and I'm not looking at you. That doesn't make sense to me. So last day volume versus average, we're at 122%. We were at 128%. So we're seeing lower volume. We're seeing the typical stock is trading almost exactly what it was last year. That's a pretty calm C to me. And the market cap may have peaked at 51.7 because we're at 51.2. By the way, we did correct for an error. And so 51.7 was slightly overstated a little bit. We had one stock in there twice. You know, Google and the other Google, the two different classes, for some reason, our data provider has them both in there. And they both have the same market cap, so we took it out. So, But we may have, the, the share price momentum, it's solid. You have solid, maybe at a peak. By the way, go back to the picture again and you'll say, Jeffrey, you're telling me the force up equals the force down. That's pretty much at an equilibrium. And I don't know if you like physics, but I like physics. Equilibrium, up equals down. I don't know. High yield corporate bonds. We were at seventy four fifty five. Where are we at now? I'm in a different account, so I can't see everything. But if I look at H Y G, we're at seventy five eighty seven. You were at seventy four fifty five. So the uptrend continues. That's bullish. I could go all day here, but the most important th oh. So most important thing now is that volatility is, is lower, it's calm. Share price momentum is looking like a peak, but it doesn't mean it can't keep going higher. It doesn't mean it has to go lower, but you're kind of at that peak. You're really, you're 98% you, of last year's average. Volume is coming down. It is the end of the year. People go on vacation, right? Um, I'll tell you this, today we have zero invested in the market in our investment account. So I'm not talking about like my 401k from 100 years ago when I used to work for some company, but the money that we use to invest, to make a profit, that money's 100% cash right now. And why is that? Because we might be at a peak. I'm nervous out there. Just saying, I'm nervous. I, I like it when it's going up or I like it when it's dropped really low. I don't want it when it's flat. I don't know which way it's going to break, right? I might be wrong. So my guess is the US dollar is going to be the same. So last we checked, it was 104.29. You're at 103.94. So you're pretty much right there you're within a quarter of a percent and so it's choppy the dollar the u.s treasuries are up <clears throat> and you see how i wrote here up 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 uptrend bullish they're up even more when we looked before it was disgusting how much they're up it's disgusting look at the look at the rate you hit a 5% peak, just about 5, 4997 in October, right? My God, man, now you're at 4.17. You're down, even if you say 87 to set, you're down 70 basis points, 7 tenths of a percent. It's a lot. It's a lot. Treasuries are down. So my guess is mortgage-backed securities, the rates are down. MBB, let's take a look. 
9156. Where were we a month ago? Look at that. Look at those mortgage-backed securities through the roof. Through the roof. That means it's cheaper for you to get a mortgage out there. Houses are going to start selling again. The actual cost of money, the, the, the money's cheaper. Money's easier. Love it. Bidding up the price of mortgage-backed securities because they're worth more. Because people are going to pay their mortgage. Now, Bitcoin was 36000 I I put Bitcoin aside for a minute. You're at almost 44000 for Bitcoin. You're up 20% in two weeks. I, I don't know the impact of Bitcoin because it hasn't traded long enough. But I know it's important. And Bitcoin's up 20%. And I'm not sure what that means. And my guess is if I were to look at the U.S. federal government cash intake, which I often do. Fred, where are we at? Total liabilities. Fred, where we're at? Treasury account. If I look for the past two weeks of the treasury account, and I look for the past two weeks of total assets, the Fed has taken us at seven seven nine six for two weeks. Six eighteen. So they've run eighteen million off the balance sheet. In two weeks, you've gone from sixty sixty six hundred seventy to seven fifty. Seven fifty four. 670, 750, that's 80 million, minus to 16. So they've pumped, no, nope, 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 it's different. So they've pulled, they pulled 80 million plus 16, they pulled $96 million out. Holy cow, liquidity, liquidity, they pulled $96 million out, billion dollars out in two weeks. U.S. Fed and Treasury pulled $96 billion out of the U.S. economy in the past two weeks. So that's material and it's interesting because of all of this, that's bearish. There's really nothing else bearish out there, right? That's it. So that's interesting. And by the way, to the my client who called me, who wanted to talk about this, and I said, look, I measured it. You know, when I measured it for the 15th, it was the other way. Two weeks later, now they pulled $96 billion of liquidity or reserves out of the system. You are right. Mea culpa. So let's talk a little bit more. Beta versus the S&P 500. Your average beta is 1.22. That's interesting. It means that the average stock is more volatile, is more exciting, has more what they call structural risk than the S&P 500. And we know already that the that we're at um, 3.16. So volatility, the way we measure it, 3.16 times 10 to the negative 5. And the SPY volatility is 1.4 times 10 to the negative 5. And those are directly comparable. So you're looking at the S&P 500 has less than half the volatility. So the S&P 500 is very calm. And we use the S&P 500 for a lot of our metrics, a lot of our work. The S&P 500 is the workhorse of the stock market. So when you see that the S&P, and we're going to go back a year, and when you see the S&P 500, look at that old chart I drew. Oh my God, I'm such a child. I love this. So what's funny is, right, let's do, it. Let's do, a, let's do some horizontal lines. Just for shits and giggles. 
I, I love this, right? So this is a support resistance line. No. Horizontal line. Oh, there it is. Yes. This is your support line up here now. And you can see we're bouncing in a range. We were under the range. You can see now we're over the range, but we're pretty much stuck in a range for months. Months and months. So if I were to say to you that we've been in this trading range since um, May, middle of May. All right, feels kind of right, right? You see we're 4,500, but you know, we were 4,100 and we're up to 4,500. We're at the top of the range. Before the range was actually 3,750, 3,800 to 4,100. And so we've been trading range bound. Who knows if we're going to break out or not? I don't know. I'm not an expert, right? I'm not, I don't have my crystal ball handy. And if I did, I'd have to polish it up. And it's hard on a call to make a polish like this. So, all right. But you can see a lot of positive momentum. The stochastics are very, very positive in the short term. Even the long term, is good, but the short term and the long term are good. Now they're starting to converge again, which is generally not that bullish. It means that the uh, the momentum is slowing down. Look at that. See the purple right there intersecting the yellow. That means that the kind of fast money, 12 periods, 12 days, is catching up to the 26 days, 26 periods. In fact, they're going to cross going to cross. That's interesting. It says maybe the momentum's not there, but it's just so darn calm. And if you look at the size of those candles, when the market drops, it drops just a tiny bit. Going up just a tiny bit. You see a couple of gaps there. You know, gaps like to be filled. Three gaps on the upside. One gap on the downside. One down, gap on two gaps on the upside. So you got gaps. Those gaps are going to want to be filled. You've got less liquidity. Makes me nervous. It's the end of the year. So volumes are going to be dropping off. But I want to go back to the main thing I wanted to tell you about, which is volatility is lower. And so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how stocks are doing great right now, right? They are. They're up. You can see them top of the trend. But you can also see that we're flattening it out. We are calming the markets down. Let's make some of these things a little bigger for you so you can see it. So we've talked about a few things right now. We've talked about volatility being down. We talked about interest rates being down, which is good for the market. We talked about the U.S. dollar being flat and choppy. We talked about Bitcoin going up 20%. Now we're going to talk about negative beta stocks. Now these negative beta stocks... There's more of them. One of them is a commonly traded Bitcoin company called Hut8 Mining. Wissa, that's like a memed stock. But then there's others. And we don't see the ones that I'm used to seeing, right? Like, so U-Haul fell off the chart. But lots of companies here. Lots of negative beta stocks. Those are anomalous. And there's plenty of them. And they're new and they're different. And that's interesting. Because it means things are changing. Um, so when volatility goes down, what does it mean? Why do you care? I want to go back to a story. If Robinson Crusoe lived on an island and Robinson Crusoe, right? Like he's alone on this island, desert island, but there just happens to be a store at the island and there happens to be a bank and there happens to be a bunch of stuff that they can forage. Like if you play Stardew Valley, there's foraging. Let's just talk a little bit about this. So Robinson Crusoe can go get consumer goods such as coconuts, such as water, such as a piece of clothing. Right? Could use his time. Time is money, baby. Right? Use your time. Make clothes. Make food. Go get water. Go make shelter. All right. Got it. Number two. 
when Robinson Crusoe has a little surplus, had a good meal, feels good, got a good night's sleep, then they can produce producer goods. Like a stick. A stick. Um, needle and thread. Right? You could, you could make a needle. You could uh, plant seeds. You can do all kinds of things. You could dig a well. Producer goods, right? And then there's a third thing, which is money. Financial goods, investments. So Robinson Crusoe makes a few too many coconuts. Well, guess what? You don't have to let them spoil. You bring them to the store. The store gives you money. You take the money. You put it in the bank. You invest in Robinson Crusoe Enterprises. You get a little interest. I'm just saying. Interest above and beyond the cost of money, above and beyond inflation. And now Robinson Crusoe is doing great. Because now Robinson Crusoe could work really hard in one period and then the next period get even more like producer goods or whatever they need robinson crusoe might want a second story on the house this is great and so but let's talk about volatility if robinson crusoe has to worry about where the money is because the stock market goes up, the stock market goes down. Then when Robinson Crusoe needs a coconut or needs water or needs a piece of clothing and they go to their bank and they say, well, I need my money this period because I want to go buy something. Next thing you know, the bank says, oh, that stock is down. You, you don't have access to money right now. I'm so sorry. Come back next period and you're going to make so much money because Bitcoin's going to go up 20%. Well, Robinson Crusoe says, you know what? I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to go buy some coconuts and I'm going to put them under the sand. Right? I'll buy a few sticks or I'll buy some extra clothes. I don't need them, but I sure as hell don't want to put my money in the bank if it's not going to be there. And so when I talk about volatility being lower, Robinson Crusoe doesn't need a very large, positive, economically positive interest rate if Robinson Crusoe knows the money will be there when Robinson needs it. And so when I talk about volatility, variance, stock price variance being down, that's really what I'm talking about. I'm saying that when you put your money in the stock market, but you might need it back, you, you don't mind if it's going to vary 10%, but you don't want to think it's going to go up or down 20 30%. You don't want to lose all your money. You don't lose 30 percent you might have a kid going to college you might have a rent payment to make this is tricky so low volatility means that we can live with be comfortable with lower rate of return and that's what we have right now and this is a beautiful thing because it means we're safe we're more safe doesn't mean we're making a ton of money. If we look at the actual returns to the stock market over the past year, I mean, they're good. Not the best I've ever seen. The S&P 500 has delivered 13.8%. The Russell, which is the small caps, has only delivered 1.3%. That's not good. Small caps not doing so well. The QQQ, your tech stocks, NASDAQ 100, has delivered 32 percent that's amazing now if you carry all this forward and you subtract out the risk-free rate which is the three-month u.s treasury rate that you can get right now if you were to type treasurydirect.gov and you were to go to see all auction results 20 most recent auctions 13 weeks 5.409 percent or 5.41%. 5.41%. Your risk-free rate should be equal to three-month U.S. Treasury rate. And that means your expected market return is about 6%. So you're putting your money in a stock market to earn an incremental 6% over what you can get from three-month treasuries. Okay. That number's been higher. That number's been lower. That number could go lower, right? Because 
it's okay. And then when you see the variance, when you see it at 3.16, that number's been much higher. It's been much, much, much higher. And you're talking about 3,277 stocks. That's a lot of stocks. So that ends the video. We have calm seas. Market is calm. S&P 500 is calm. Overall stocks are calm. And what that means is that the model, the model that if you were to buy our run, you would get, is giving you the stocks that are gonna do the best when the market goes higher. So these stocks have been screaming, screaming higher as the market went up. It's crazy, it's crazy how much they've gone up. And they're doing great. Now, we don't own any stocks right now. So I can talk about any stock I want. And I don't have to worry about any conflict of interest. But I'm not really going to talk about any stocks. Because it's not about that. It's about the collection of stocks that are kind of risky. Risky assets. But that have this amazing characteristic of having lower than expected volatility historically. And higher than expected return in the future. Wow. Wow. Your stocks will just knock your socks off. And these stocks have been consistently in that category for the last couple of weeks. And they've been earning earning that, uh, that return. It's been pretty amazing. So that's been great. You're probably wondering, what's the coupon code? The coupon code is QED hyphen C. All caps. Coupon code. QEDC. Now, Jeffrey, why is the coupon code QEDC? And what do I get for that? If you type in QEDC, QED hyphen C, you'll save 90% off on our Chicago Quantum Net score analysis, the daily one, daily long or short. So regularly, it's seven hundred fifty dollars for you through the end of the year. It's seventy five dollars. There's no reason not to try it. Now there is one reason not to try it. You do have to give me your physical address. You have to tell me where you live because I am a registered investment advisor and I need to keep records. So there's some reasons maybe if you're a, you know, if you're one of those people that, that can't talk about who you are, what you are, if you're like an anonymous account, then it's not gonna work. But if you're a normal person, and by the way, I'll bill you. I'll send you an invoice. I'll take the risk of you not even paying if you want. We work for institutions. We work for high net worth individuals and accredited individuals who know what to do with this information. Thank you for watching. If you have questions, give me a call. If you want to talk about it, you can even you say, you know what, Jeff, I want to collaborate. I love this stuff. There's my phone number, personal phone number. Call me. Say, Jeff, I want to try a run. You send me an email at jeffrey at quantum-usaci.com. I'll answer your email. We got the data. I got the stock picks. We're making money. It's good. So you should uh, give us a call. You should try it out no reason not to. Now, you might say, you know what, Jeff? I'm not interested in making money. There's people out there that don't want to make money. I, I get it. I get it. There's people that got enough money. You know, I wish I was one of those people that had enough money. But, uh, you know, sometimes I feel like I probably got enough money, too. So I'm going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of this. And for those people who feel like they have... By the way, coupon code QEDC, 
save 90% off on our model through the end of the year. So Jeffrey, tell me, what do you do in your spare time? It's a good question. Well, we've been doing research into the South China Sea, and I just finished my Spratly Islands. And so if you're interested in the Spratly Islands, let's say there's some news article. Um, I had read that the Philippines is going to be putting a naval base on Thedo Island. You say, oh, Jeffrey Cohen does some research on Thedo Island. What's it look like? Well, the Subi Reef, this is just west of the Laotia Bank. Subi Reef is well known. Subi, by the way, if Subi Reef is Chinese, because the islands don't say, they don't have a big sign that says I'm owned by the Chinese or the Philippines or the Vietnamese or the Malaysians or the Indonesians or the Taiwanese or the Japanese, they don't say it. So how do I know? I got to like start doing looking at a lot of things. But we'll start with the Subi. So Subi is, is this elegant, beautiful airport. And this airport, so it's a three and a half mile diameter island. It's a beautiful, it's, look at that airport. The thing has got hangers. Like I got hangers in my closet. They have hangers. You could put squadrons out there. 1.95 mile long runway. And then you got ray domes and cannons. We saw, we counted 28 aircraft hangers. I got about 28 hangers in my closet. That's about right. You got the cannons. I love these cannons. By the way, this, this, um, this structure of a building, I love it. You can't get enough of it. Let's see if I can show it to you. I just happen to have, here it is. I had an extra production, and you'll notice that this is not the same cannon. It's oriented differently. All my pictures are north-south. But you can see how, got a cannon right there, cannon, cannon, this one, cannon, 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 cannon. It's beautiful buildings. I don't know whoever's building these. They build them all over the South China Sea. They must come from Ikea. All right. We see base housing. We see athletic facilities. Look how beautiful this housing is. I can't get over it. I think of stuff like this. I think of like tsunamis and storms. And I think of water damage. But these look beautiful. And by the way, I don't see any air conditioners on the roofs. So I'm actually thinking that there's no air conditioning. So if you if you got an issue with the, the breathing, be careful. Look at that. One hospital, two hospitals. It's beautiful. So Thi Tu Island. Let's talk about Thi Tu Reef. So here's Thi Tu Island. And it's got a run. It doesn't quite look as impressive. You got and maybe this is the Philippines. They got a little, they got a little runway there. Now I don't think it's 1.95 miles, and they got a lot of houses there. And they got like little guns and harpoons and stuff around the outside. I feel like I'm back in like the 1950s trying to defend an island. There's not much industry. It's like people who fish who live there and a little island and one ship. A nice protected bay, a nice protected cove. That's nice. I like that, right? thought I measured this runway. Nah, I must not have put it in there. No, the runway is 0 0.65 miles. So the other one's like two miles, and this one's like uh, two-thirds of a mile. That's all right. So, so they're going to put a, a Navy base right there. Now, if you look at the Thi Tu Island, you'll notice one, two, three reclamations. It's interesting. It's very interesting because you could connect this island to this island. These are reefs, right? Underwater reefs. To this reef, to this reef, or shoals now. You can just connect them up. Next thing you know, you'd have a pretty nice long, uh, long island there. 
Long Island. That's not a funny joke, especially if you're from the East Coast and you know what Long Island is. And I love this. I mean, there's a Chinese letter right there. This is a, these are beautiful. You can see the difference, though, in the islands. Right? This one, very elegant. It's beautiful. Look at that, those runways. Look at that little helicopter right there. A little, little bus. Look at the cannons. That's beautiful. That beautiful housing. I, just, I, can't, I can't take it. And then you got the two, which is looking a little shabby. I'm sorry, but it's true. A little shabby. And it looks like this is where the Philippines are going to put a naval base. I just think it's interesting that between Subi and Thetu, they're gonna they're gonna think they're gonna get along, and so we're gonna take a quick look, Google Earth. Let's see if we can get there from here. How far are they from each other? Yeah, it starts over at the. Uh, Pretty much have memorized where all these things are. And yes, I could probably do like a little search. Here we go. So what's interesting about where these are, these are right in the north of the Spratleys. So this is Vietnam. This is the Philippines. Down there is Malaysia. Up there's China. So China's pretty far away. So let's take a look. Where is Subi and where is Thetu? In terms of as the crow flies, you would do a measurement from this runway to this runway is 16 miles. I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm putting a naval base 16 miles from that beautiful airport <laughs> and naval base. But maybe you are. 16 miles. Okay. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. It's nice to have this data. Now, there's, of course, there's other things too. You might be like, hey, there's this thing called the Swallow Reef. Malaysia. Somebody put the word Malaysia on the island's runway. Okay. This is what it looks like. It's a, it's a little old. It's looking a little old, a little, little barren and desolate, but you know, it gets the job done. You've got a diving school right here. Looks like a naval vessel. Get a nice helipad. You have a runway. How long is that runway, Jeffrey? 0.73. So it's kind of similar to the 2 it, it doesn't quite hit the two mile mark, but it's not a bad runway. I don't really see a lot. I see two... Um, airplane hangers. Not a lot. That's not a lot, right? I got some open air places to park an airplane, but so this is Malaysia. Okay, they're rocking and rolling. They're ready to go. And so if we go back to Google Earth and we say, all right, so where's Swallow Reef? Well, Swallow Reef is down here. And that's much closer to Malaysia. They're focused on protecting themselves. I think that's great. And so, yeah, I would expect a lot more Chinese action up here in the Paracels. Because there's Hainan Island, right? Gulf of Tonkin. There's Vietnam. What's interesting is this island right here in the middle. I was just curious, right? Like... China's got this big deal now with the South China Sea. So what's going on in the Gulf of Tonkin? In the Gulf of Tonkin, there's this one beautiful island right in the middle. It's a Vietnamese island. Dao Bak Long. Dao Bak Long. It's a beautiful island. It's Vietnamese. So I don't know. It makes you think about it, right? Where are we at? What are we doing? What's going on in the South China Sea? And every time I, I look and I see an article on the South China Sea, it makes me want to go back to my website and see, can I find the island? Can I find the island? And can I figure this out? 
right? Can I look at, let's say, Quateron and the London Reefs? It's beautiful. Quateron has this nice little... Um, it's hard to know what it is. It's lines of trees planted to probably hide something. All right, and then you got the Ray Domes, and then you got, this is another building that you used to seeing. So you saw the Cannon building. This is the other building. This building has a deep courtyard. You can see one, two, three, four, at least five layers high, five floors high, maybe six. Remember, no air conditioning. Six floors, deep, deep um, courtyard. You've got a... Um, you got a ramp going up into a slightly higher floor. And you know that because of the shadow. You've got turrets off to the side. Which I find that very odd. What is that? Why do we see that, right? And then here's another. So, And you see some of these islands are very new, meaning they're still under construction. This one still has water in it. Still see the reclamation um, pieces right there. They're probably building like a dock, something like that. And then you see this infrastructure right here at the end, and that could reclaim hella more. You could take this right here and you can blow out that whole reef structure. Blow it all out with sand, cover it all up. Now you got twice, three times the island. And then you got the East London Reef, Central London Reef, and you can see East London Reef, lots of building infrastructure. Lots of infrastructure to build up more island capacity. And so with our website, we've documented, this is all from Google Earth. This is all um, open source um, satellite imagery of all these islands. Next step for us is going to be go back, do some cleanup, Jeff. Do some cleanup. Like every one of these pictures should have an appropriate caption. Not all of them do. That's something to check, right? And then there could be some other other sites that we look at, such as tourist information bureaus. And we might find that some of these islands you can actually hop a flight to, buy a piece of real estate. And some of them might be private islands. One of them looked like an Elon Musk island. It was beautiful. It, probably not, but it looked beautiful, right? A fiery cross is just sand. Brand new island. Look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. Look at that runway. It's not only got a runway, but it has a second. It has a second, like, uh, tarmac that you can use. And it's got the... Um, you see them right there. There's so many of these... Uh, Hangers, aircraft hangers, small aircraft hangers, large aircraft hangers. And then you've got your, your base quarters with your sports, your athletics. I always think it's amazing you live on an island with no air conditioning, but yet you want to be outside playing soccer, playing basketball, running track, because you got to stay fit. Who needs to stay fit? Scientists, teachers, right? They're going to be out working out all day. I love it. The teachers and scientists I see are very fit, very lean, muscular. It's great. And, uh, you know, we'll go in and we'll talk about, oh, one of those buildings again. That's the building. That's where it's from. All right. It's Fiery Island. See, I thought I had an extra picture, but I don't. Fiery Cross Reef. Got it. No worries. Now I know, look at a beautiful hospital facility, flat roof, probably land helicopters right on the roofs. Oil, looks like either oil tanks or potentially ray domes, tons of ray domes. I don't know. And another one of those nice, uh, nice cannons. I think Fiery Cross is a terrific island, right? It's about 300 miles from the Philippines and 300 miles from Vietnam. But it makes you wonder... Who owns this property? Like like I said before, it doesn't have a sign on it, right? So you got to figure it out. Who's got the beautiful runway? Who's got the uh, the dock facilities with the crane to load and unload the heavy, heavy ships? I don't know. So I guess I'm sharing with you a little hobby. So from a stock market perspective, things are very calm. Risk is low. 
let's look at the VIX. Just to just to shits and giggles here, right? The VIX should be low. Yeah, 12.85. Let's look at it over a year. You can see that thing is, it, it's not as low as it's ever been this year, which is 12 and a half. You're 12.85. You're pretty darn low. This is a volatility index. We measure actual volatility. The CBOE trades options on an index, so they price volatility. So it's nice to see in our model that we see lower volatility and we see the price of volatility is lower. It makes sense. This is generally very bullish for stocks. And so, again, like I said, we are, uh, we're waiting right now. But I think the market, it's a tremendous market. It's a terrific market right now for those who want to, uh, who want to hold a position into the new year. And again, I'm going to show you the picture because I think it's important. And now we're going to close. So it's calm seas, the forces that are driving the market up equal the forces that are driving the market down. It's a calm, kind of evenly balanced market, which means that the market probably has room to go up. Because like Robinson Crusoe, as long as I know the money's there when I need it, I don't need such a high rate of economic return. Thank you for watching. I'm Jeffrey Cohen. If you like the video, we're not paid to make the videos. No one's really even watching them. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button so I feel good about it. <laughs> Give me a like. Drop a comment. Give me a phone call. Buy a run. Do something. Visit the website. Shoot me an email. Give me some interaction. Because we do this for a living. I love what I do. It's really fun. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed it too. And good luck if you're doing any research into the South China Sea. There's some good sources out there. Most of them are out of D.C. But we're here in Chicago. And so uh, we're, getting, uh, we're getting smarter every day on the South China Sea. Take care now. Bye-bye.